Hi and welcome to Wrong Way. Today I'm gonna tell you about nine things you need to know in order to make your batteries in your electric vehicles last longer. Let's get into it. Wrong way. But before we get into the facts, it's important to understand how a lithium ion battery pack looks like. Each battery pack contains individual battery cells connected in series and parallel. For example, the Xiaomi M365 kick scooter has a 10S 3P battery, meaning it has 10 batteries in series and 3 in parallel, a total of 30 batteries. Each of these individual cells have a nominal voltage of around 3.6 volts. The voltage of cells adds up if you put them in series. In this example we have 10, so it's 36 volts. But there's also a peak voltage around 4.2 volts and a minimum voltage around 2.5 volts. Though most manufacturers don't discharge the battery below 3 volts. All of this is controlled by the battery management system and a controller transfers the energy into the motor. There are tons of batteries with different specifications, but we'll get onto that later. Now, when you have the basics, let's get onto the facts. Number one. The question I get the most by far is how should I charge my vehicle? Let's look at an article from batteryuniversity.com where you can clearly see how battery degradation kicks in according to different levels of charge. Remember that these numbers represent an average and they can be influenced by a multitude of factors like weather, temperature, weight, strain on the motor, controller, battery type. But they represent a trend and you can clearly see that charging the vehicle to 100% is a big no-no if you want the battery to last long. Some manufacturers, like Cyclone e-bike for example, set the charge limit at 4.15 volts in order to increase battery longevity. The battery cycle in an electric vehicle, let's take the Xiaomi N365, means that you charge it to a certain level and discharge it. In this case the range is around 20 km, so let's say one full cycle is 20 km of riding. Charging to 100%, it means you have around 6,000 to 10,000 kilometers of range. If you charge it to 75%, and remember the range drops to around 15 kilometers then, you can get from 1,200 to 2,000 cycles, meaning from 18,000 kilometers to a whopping 30,000 kilometers on a single battery unit. Of course these aren't the exact numbers and there are lots of factors that influence battery degradation but I would advise you to charge the battery to around 80% and discharge it to around 20, maybe 10%. Never charge the battery to 100% unless you're going on a longer trip or to 0% and leave it discharged. It will significantly decrease battery longevity. Number 2 should you first connect the charger to the wall plug or first connect it to your vehicle? It might save your charge port. Putting the cable first into the vehicle and then into the wall charger might even result in a charger explosion. If you were to put the cable from the charger to the vehicle first, you might see a spark. That's because there's a big voltage difference between the battery pack and the charger. In order to prevent that, plug the charger into the wall connector first and then connect it to the vehicle. There will be a smaller voltage difference between the battery pack and the charger, which will increase longevity. Number three. Most of the vehicles, especially the ones with bigger battery packs, support faster charging. Now, there are a couple of key ingredients to determine how fast you can charge your vehicle. They're the following. Charge port, battery management system, battery cells. The weakest link will define how fast you can charge your battery. So if you have a 20S or 84 volt battery pack and the BMS can handle just 5 amps, it doesn't matter that your battery cells could charge at the rate of up to 10 or 15 amps if the battery management system cannot handle it. All of the data to find out how fast you can charge your device is usually available on the internet. So remember to check what the weakest link in your vehicle is and remember the voltage of your battery pack. 
Also, if possible, charge the battery slow and use the fast charger only when you need it. Number 4. Battery cell types. Now there's a multitude of different battery cell types, ones with bigger capacity like the Panasonic's with 3500 mAh, or ones like the Sony VTC5's that have a higher discharge rate, though a smaller capacity. LG HG2 cells combine both high capacity and high discharge rates, though they're quite expensive. If you have the possibility, before buying a new vehicle, check which batteries are they using so you can learn more about the vehicle you're about to purchase. When buying from AliExpress, well, you don't know the battery unless you open it up. Uh, you can check out Raptor TV for this type of content. But when you do a DIY project, you are the one who decides which battery to choose, so choose wisely. Number four. No, oh no, wait, number five. Let's talk about the battery pack size, and it's really, really important. The price of an electric vehicle depends hugely on the battery pack size. But if you don't have any financial constraints, or you can live with a heavier vehicle, I would always suggest to go with the biggest possible battery pack. Bigger battery packs have a greater longevity for many reasons. Number one being, a full cycle on a bigger battery pack equals a bigger range, so a thousand cycles on a bigger battery pack equal just a huge distance driven. Individual cells in a bigger battery pack are also way less strained to give you the same performance, also increasing their lifespan. Number 6 If you don't want to ride your personal electric vehicle for a while, which I don't advise you, then just store it with a around 50-60% charge. It won't lose much uh, battery percentage over the time, as you can see on this table here. Never store it at 0%, because you can just damage the battery. And when you pick up your beloved device after 3 months of sitting at 0%, then the battery might be just dead. Also, don't leave it charging. Never leave it charging because battery degradation will be really heavy. Number 7 If you're living in a colder climate, the range of your electric device might drop significantly from summer to winter. Don't worry about it too much though, because most batteries can handle up to minus 10 degrees Celsius without any problems. But they charge at around 0 to 5 degrees, so when you come back from your trip, be sure to just leave the device for a while sitting and plug it in maybe after an hour of sitting in a warmer room. When it comes to overheating, most devices have an intelligent solution for preventing any issues with the battery. So when a device overheats, usually it just won't charge. <coughs> Number 9 Battery Replacement and the beauty about lithium-ion cells is that number one, they're recyclable, so all the stuff that is inside a battery cell can be reused, and that's the beauty of it. In order to learn more about why battery cells are the future of our planet, just click the link in the right upper corner. Different battery cells have different prices, obviously, but the standard Panasonic 18650s come in around $5 to $10 per unit. So for 30 batteries in our Xiaomi M365, we would pay around $150 to $300. Um, of course, we have to count in labor and for connecting each battery to the battery management system and so on, but the price isn't really that high. So even if the battery starts being pretty much unusable after a while, you can just get a new one for the fraction of the cost of the scooter. Number 8 Remember to always leave your electric vehicle in the shade, not directly exposed to the sun, as optimal temperatures for batteries are between 10 and 30 degrees, and direct sun exposure might warm up the batteries too much. And I wish I had 10 facts about how to increase the longevity of your electric vehicle battery, but uh, sadly I don't. So if you are still here, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>